I thank you so much for joining us, Elizabeth. That's awesome. Absolutely. Oh, I'm so excited about this. This is really cool for visual descriptions. Um, my name is Laura Brody, and I am a Caucasian middle-aged middle -aged woman with brown hair in front of a full bookshelf. And I'm welcoming Elizabeth. I'm Elizabeth. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I am a woman with glasses and a white woman with glasses and a red cardigan in my office. I don't remember. Did you reach out to me? Did I find you through Instagram? How did we do this? I began an application for your most recent show and I didn't finish it. And you came after me and said, you need to finish this because I would like to show your work in my show. Because your work is fabulous. And, you know, I got to see it in some of your photography on your website and it really is stunning. So it's nice to get to meet you. Thank oh. you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I've I've put a lot of work into developing my, my skills so that I can better help my community. And it's been a real journey and I've really enjoyed it. So what got you into disability photography? So I first actually started, I mean, I've always loved taking pictures, but I first started really focusing on photography around 2016. My, my illness, my I have a chronic illness. That's how I'm mm -hmm. disabled that I'm, I'm neurodivergent, but um, mm -hmm. with my chronic illness, I had gotten worse and wasn't really able to leave mm -hmm. the house much. And I got really bored around the house. So I started taking photos of my cats and that's how I learned photography. And then around 2017, a friend invited me to a drag show and said, bring your camera. And I fell in love with performance photography. Um, that's really how I developed a lot of my skill is in the drag scene. Then around 2019, I started getting into boudoir, things like that. And I realized what a lack of representation the disability community has in boudoir in, in most genres of photography and certainly behind the lens, we are lacking right. in diversity and ability wise, at least. Well, probably all kinds of diversity if you think about it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I really wanted to focus on all aspects of photo photographing my community. I um, mm -hmm. I love doing adaptive boudoir. I love adaptive fashion, um, adaptive athletics. I love just portraiture in general. And I really try to show my subjects, my models as they wish to be seen. So often we are told yeah. by society who we are and how we're going to portray ourselves. And I like to put that power back into my models. That's really good. What kind of conversations do you have with your models? So one of the questions I ask that they really don't like is people don't like thinking this like this about themselves and talking about themselves. Mm -hmm. It's really, I think they feel put on the spot, but I get a more authentic answer that way. I just, I tell them, I ask them for three adjectives that describes themselves and they mm. always like are a little taken aback by that question, but mm. I get answers sometimes that are really surprising and I can use to, Ooh. I just, I really want to put the power back in to my models. I, I talk to them about their experiences. I talk to them about just, I, I like to get to know them before I have a session with them but the the best the best response I've ever gotten from a model was I, I did a shoot with um a woman and her husband I don't know if they were married yet actually but he has cerebral palsy and I think she does too and she's also visually impaired and when she, they saw the photos they said that nobody's ever shown their relationship in that way before and I actually get that a lot that, that people see themselves in a way they've never seen themselves in my photography that's just, so neat it's it's empowering to them they I've had people message me after my sessions and talk about how they're just still on this high of feeling empowered and feeling like they can like conquer the world and oh it's such a great feeling and I just I'm really excited that people are feeling at home in my studio or in front of my lens and that they they are willing to try things that they wouldn't do before because they have that connection with me as a disabled person as well that you just can't get with an able photographer oh, of course and you you're in community yeah there's a there's a trust there that that isn't 
that you we couldn't find elsewhere. That's really cool. And it's an honor, you know, it's an, it's, I, I'm always honored to be able to bring that part of a person's personality to the rest of the world. That's really good. It makes sense. It was it specifically about people that that was really the thing that drew you to it, to doing the, the portraiture. I've always loved, I've always had to have a personality, even if it's not a person I photo. I, so besides people, I like photographing flowers because I feel like they have a personality they bring out, if that makes sense. Oh yeah. And if there's no personality there, I just can't find that spark, that connection to really, I don't know, to, to bring to life, right? There's nothing to pull out. So I don't mm -hmm. really have anything, but the, yeah, the personalities and, and spending more, I've always, I've always loved disability since I was younger. And I used to actually do little classes on it that were not the best education that one could provide, but I was in elementary school and I was trying my best and I know better now. And, um, you were trying, which I is try super I important. Always, I, I, it's always, I've always felt at home in this community, even before I was physically disabled. I've just always felt so at home. I love how adaptive we are. I love how we find ways to do things that people never think we can do. And I love how we find the most creative solutions. I just love us so much. But I, I have been spending a lot more time, especially with um, more cognitively disabled people. Mm -hmm. And I've been so educated. I've been so lucky to be so educated on how how much more they can do than what society just like puts on mm. them. Yeah. And you like I have my own um inner ableism against myself, but also against other disabled people because that's what we're taught. We're taught it from an ableist point of view and from that from that medical model mindset. And to be able to learn from my models and just being around different abilities and different disabilities is has been such an enlightening experience and it's been really great well and I got to shoot um I went to fashion week this past Ooh, September it fun. was really great so Shutterstock was generous enough to send me out there so I could do a, a couple Ooh. different things including shoot the runway of dreams um, oh fun yeah the runway of dreams show and I got to spend some time backstage with them and stuff like that. And I just always have this sense of I'm I'm home when I'm in a place surrounded by disability. It was the same feeling I had when I went to the Abilities Expo in LA. Yeah. That it's just, I'm home. I'm proud. I'm proud of who we are. I, and, but to see the confidence that all these models had and if you if you go to my website and different social medias you can see the photos I took of of the runway and their 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 confidence is is something that I really aspire to match one day because I do not have that level of confidence and I just thought it was really awesome what do you think would help you with your confidence oh jeez. <laughs> therapy I don't know there's yeah. a lot there's a lot in there but I the more experience I have the better I feel about my capabilities but you know everyone struggles with yeah imposter syndrome and I it's the better you get sometimes the harder it is because the more you know you don't know well that's true that's just totally true I'm going to share the screen with some of your adaptive photography, which I think shows some of the things from Runway of Dreams. Yes, please. And for people who don't know, Runway of Dreams is this great adaptive fashion. So fashion that is designed for people with disabled bodies. Um, sometimes that means that the things are, zippers are replaced with snaps or sometimes you, it's designed for people who are seated in chairs. There's a bunch of different things. And but, we've had a bunch of brands join the movement. This past show was the first time Victoria's Secret had been a part of it. And that was incredible to see. Oh, how fun. Oh my goodness, yeah. All right. Do you have any pictures of that in particular? Um, I do probably over on Instagram. I'm not sure. Okay. I, I may have some here. I'm, I, can't, I can't remember. It's okay. But, 
but that's my friend Caitlin in the upper right in okay. the show. Um she's a model and she's gorgeous and she's fantastic. And on the upper left is something I did for a company called Bumpin, who was working on the first um sex toy for people with hand disabilities. Ah. This is yeah. some stock photography I did. That's my friend Keiko, and I that's one of my favorite photos. It's a great photo. And then the yoga one is what I did for Shutterstock when I was given the grant. I did some work for them and they it was the disability all in grant to help bring ability diversity to stock photography. And that's so great. we did a yoga shoot and that was so much fun. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I'm also going to share once I get to back to that page, the photo that we're including in opulent mobility. This is one that Anthony and I looked at and was like, this is just so joyous. It was really lovely. Well, and they're that, best friends too. Well, you'll see. Oh, well, that helps. You can kind of see it, I think. Yes. So on the right is Karen and she was Ms. Wheelchair America. Nice. In 2019. And then on the left is Barb. She is Ms. Wheelchair Pennsylvania 2000. 18 I want to say and she used to run Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania and now she's gone to college to get her disability studies degree to like really blow up the system and make a difference in it learn so much from both of them and uh Karen actually is an ambassador now for I can't remember the name of it but it's a standing wheelchair and last year she showed a photo of her being able to like stand to decorate her Christmas tree and it was amazing oh cool so how did you meet up with these people so Barb had been bugging me for a few years to come shoot Ms. Wheelchair Pennsylvania. And okay. I finally got to in 2021. And it was so cool. It was such a great experience. The girls are incredible. And yeah, so I went out to Pennsylvania and I did that. And then after it was all over, we had this little shoot in the hiking trail. And yeah, they aren't they the cutest? Oh they are God. just adorable. I love how the rainbows just kind of Join with each other. It's, it's, she is, so Barb is called Rolling Rainbow because her whole, you can kind of see like her seat has that rainbow cheetah. There's mm -hmm. rainbows all over. And so that's, that's what they call her. Nice. That's really great. Oh, I just I have really, really talented friends. I have really <laughs> creative, intelligent, talented, amazing friends that, that are wonderful. It makes a big difference. I think I, for a lot of people, certainly for those of us who are artists, that you can't underestimate the power of your community and the people that you have to work with. Absolutely. It makes such a big difference because otherwise it's just, I don't know, you get and stuck have, in a little box in, in your own head. Oh, absolutely. You have to have that community you can reach out to. And whenever I have a need for a model, I have so many people that are wanting to work with me and it's, that's so it's really great. great. It's, a, it's a great feeling. And it really shows that they're wanting to, that they appreciate my point of view and my art, artistic slant. And they, they also just want to help what I'm trying to do, which is just to bring more um, representation to everything else. And certainly Shutterstock is a great way to start with that. But yeah. showing, showing off so much of Things like real one way, uh, runway of dreams and um, the abilities expo, which uh, for people who don't know about that, this is a big expo, which is all about. A, there's a lot of equipment. It's really heavy on wheelchairs, walkers, a bunch of different kinds of adaptive vans, that kind of thing. But it's also a great place for a lot of, of disabled groups to get together. So there's several dance organizations that meet up. Did you have some favorites for this last year? Um, so I didn't go last, I went in 2019. Okay. okay. Um, I would really want to go again though. I, I loved watching the Rolettes. Of course, they're always so, they're so adorable. much fun to watch. I am a huge um, occupational therapy fangirl. I am obsessed with occupational therapists. I think they are so undervalued and they, they have that perfect combination of creativity and problem solving like mm -hmm. that STEM side that just come together. And that's what a lot, when you're talking about the equipment side, that's what a lot of the expo I would say is, is is like kind of like an OT space where you can see these solutions 
and they're so simple, but nobody ever actually got, like follows through with coming up with them to solve these problems that if you didn't face it, you wouldn't think to be an actual problem. Mm-hmm. Like, so when I started using the wheelchair, all of a sudden I realized how bad the sidewalks everywhere were. And my partners all of a sudden did too. And now even when they're not with me, when they're just out and about, they notice these things and they notice the plant in the middle of the walkway and things like that. And you don't see the world that way until you're forced to. Mm-hmm. So then when you go to the ex- expo and see like a zero gravity spoon that, so you don't have, so it, I don't actually really know how it works, but it's for people who have paralysis or the mm. shoe that, so you don't have to tie it. You kind of just like slide your foot like this and it yep. laces itself. And, or there, there was this mat that can be rolled out on sand so the mm-hmm. wheelchairs can go on the beach. It's just th- these great solutions and people are actually trying to make the world more accessible. And it, it that's the other part of it. Besides seeing the creativity and the ingenuity, you see that people are trying to change the world for for accessibility to be the norm instead of like an add-on later on. There are also usually several artists there. Yeah. And I would love to do a class one day on like posing, posing in a wheelchair and the right wardrobe for photos, things like that. I that'd think be that'd fun. be really great. Yeah. Neat. Is that something you've been working up? I'm, I've been working on a few different things. I'm working on that and I'm working on um, therapeutic photography class. I'm working on a class. Well, I was working on a class for uh, sex ed for people with cognitive disabilities. And I was really excited about that. And I found out that that need has already been filled in my city, but so I might join forces with them. Mm. But I there's there's so much, there's such a lack of education in that area for people with disabilities and it's doesn't it make sense we're all we all have the same wants and desires so just because yep. somebody has a disability like they, they're literally taken out of the classroom it yep. doesn't and and that can lead to really bad things happening too because they aren't educated on that and it's yeah and it, that was a tangent sorry about that no, it's actually a really important one to talk about it that I think a lot of people don't realize how much they treat disabled people as children yes. and as though they don't have any adult needs or desires or growth. And that's simply not true. And that that spreads beyond the sex ed stuff to things like sheltered workshops when they're not giving their adult children who are disabled a chance to actually work because they just are too scared to let them try. And I've seen this happen so many times. Mm -hmm. And I've also seen that when parents actually let their adult children try, they can hold a job. They might not be verbal. They might be a mobility challenge and they can still hold a job, but these parents are holding their kids back. I get that it's scary and I get that they're making the best decision that they think they can, but it's just really hard to see when I, but there's so much potential. Yeah. Everybody, everybody has the same ones. They want, they, they want that connection, but they also want purpose. And when you're not letting your, and they want independence, everybody wants that independence. And when you're not letting your adult child at least try for these human normal desires, you're really stifling them. And assuming that they don't have them because you don't want to think about it that way. And that's a real mistake. Yes. I do know what it's like to have people underestimate me because I'm disabled. And I know what it's like to have people think that I can't be independent, think that Mm -hmm. I can't graduate high school, think that I can't have a healthy relationship. And I have done all these things and more. And so it's, it's, you're doing your, your child a real service by not disservice by not letting them try at least. So it'd be really nice if we tried to make a more of an effort to make sure that everybody gets an opportunity. Because everybody has something to contribute. Everyone has their own point of view that is valuable to express. This is what we need to do more of in the world today, period. Agreed. But you're but you're working on that. You're working on the representation and you're working on the, yeah. And I think uh, that's great. Thank you so much for being part of it. I'm really glad. 